Good morning. Welcome. I'm Balaji Bhakta, founder and CEO of Ventana Micro. It's a momentous day today for the entire RISPI community. When I say that, I'm not saying it lightly. It's a hugely important day for the RISPI community as well as for Ventana Micro. Today, Ventana brings RISC-V architecture to high-performance data center and other applications using RISC-V architecture for the first time in the world. So it's a great time to be part of the RISC-V community. And the opportunity for us to have RISC-V play at the same leagues as any other ISA going after every application possible and available to CPUs, right from low end all the way to the data center class, is made possible thanks to Ventana's product that we're going to talk about today. To do that, I'd like to invite my co-founder and friend, Greg Favor, on stage. Oh, hi. Greg. Mm -hmm. yes. I've been uh, working with Greg for about 15 years now. He and I partnered together to do the world's ever first 64-bit ARM processor company that was capable of doing data center class workloads. We did that starting 2009, and we've been very successful at bringing that product to the market. A lot of good, positive take from various customers, hyperscalers, uh, high-performance embedded sockets, et cetera. However, a few critical issues that our hyperscaler customers care about largely remained out of reach. Why? Because of the closed nature of those two incumbent ISIS. So if you have a CPU, and if you take a look at any CPU-based subsystem, you'll see some critical issues that cause tremendous limitations for hyperscalers and OEMs. Oh, pushing the wrong slide. Okay, there you go. What are those challenges? Why does the world need another ISA? You know, you have very successful ISAs that have been around for a long time, but why do we need one more? Because the existing architectures are quite rigid, and they do not allow customer innovation and differentiation whatsoever. And secondly, they scale performance mm -hmm. in a way that's directly proportional to Moore's law. Each and every one of you may have seen a version of the slide. Mm -hmm. And look at, look at that green curve. That's been flat for about a decade. So if you're gonna be pushing performance envelope with a flat Moore's law working against you, you need to go look for opportunities to gain that somewhere else. And that's where Ventana comes into the picture. And that's where RISC-V comes into the picture. We've been able to take advantage of the unique opportunity to create a new, highly disruptive processor product line using the open and extensible nature of RISC-V. And so, Having successfully done several architectures, when I talk about Greg, he's been around, he may look younger, but this guy's been doing processes for 35 years. And uh, he brought x86-based server class products to the market successfully towards his earlier part of his career. After that, he partnered with me to bring ARM to the data center, 64-bit ARM. And we thought that was not enough because both were closed architectures. We needed to revolutionize the overall compute space with an open hardware innovation using this 5 So we both rolled up our sleeves and said, okay, let's go do something about it. And that's how Ventana came into the picture. So what are the key challenges? I said there are some critical issues that remain. The key issues are cores, if you push performance at any cost, they become energy inefficient. So creating cores that are energy efficient is key. That's a key goal for Ventana, that's number one. Number two, 
how do you achieve other innovations? Hyperscalers really care about things like, you know, everybody has their own proprietary and innovative ways to accelerate workloads. You know, hyperscalers and customers know their workloads better than the silicon guys. Why are we getting in their way? Why don't you give them a platform that allows them to innovate using concepts like hardware, software, core design? That's exactly what we also accomplished with our architecture. Plus, late binding. What is late binding? If you can have the ability for hyperscalers to determine the right configuration for their processor SOC, namely right sizing compute, I.O. and memory, based on their workload specific needs, you get a product that's highly efficient and optimized, and it also gives you a compelling cost point. Mm -hmm. And those are the kinds of things we've been able to accomplish with that. So, you know, when you see this flattening Moore's law and curve, you can see this curve, I don't know if you, how many of you have seen, I mean, this I borrowed from my friend Bob Brennan from Intel. I think he borrowed it from someone else. But this particular chart, or Moore's law, was the limitation. But if you look at what Gordon Moore said in 1965, he says, it may prove to be more economical to build large systems out of smaller functions, which are separately packaged and interconnected. What does it mean? Chiplets. There was no such thing as chiplets. Basically, Gordon Moore predicted that there was going to be a point at which the Moore's law, as we come to know it today, was going to be flattening out. The only way out of that was to build systems that are put together using chiplets. So highly, eff highly efficient cores <coughs> that are <coughs> capable of supporting customer innovation, plus implement it and productize it using ultra low latency, parallel interconnect based chiplet architecture. These two things we wanted to combine into a product offering, which brings us to world's first, world's first RISC-V based data center class, high performance, highly efficient, processor in the world, mm -hmm. we're on, we won. So we really are excited to bring RISC-V to the data center space, as well as any of the high performance applications that one could conceive of. Nothing is beyond the reach <coughs> of RISC-V, thanks to <coughs> Ventana, we're on, we won. And to talk about <laughs> the underpinnings of this particular solution, I'm going to ask Greg, to join with me and walk us through some you know, technical aspects of what Where on V1 is all about. Great. Right. I think you can hold it quicker. I'll be your Vanna White, all right? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, uh, hello, everyone. So uh, what makes up a data center class CPU? Uh, it starts with a high single thread performance. And to get that, uh, what we've developed is a wide, aggressive, out of order uh, CPU core. Uh, a sophisticated front end, decoupled predict fetch, large B2B branch predictors, then feeding a wide decode pipe, uh, feeding a wide uh, execution back end. The second important thing is uh, scaling efficiency. As uh, you scale up to high core counts to, uh, to uh, have a, a high scaling efficiency to the performance that you're still getting out of those cores, what enables that is a couple of things. One, a very substantial cache hierarchy, even just within our compute cluster, as we call it, within Chiplet, is a three-level cache hierarchy. As you can see, each core has its own private one megabyte of L2 caches, and then there's a further 48 megabytes uh, within the cluster, a cluster level L3 cache, so 64 megabytes in aggregate at just a cluster level. Ultimately, as you'll see in the next slide, you now start getting multiple chiplets in a system as well. Um, but so scaling efficiency, second important thing. Uh, along with that are things like data center class or enterprise class RAS. Uh, in our case, we protect everything. All RAMs are fully protected, hardware correction, auto recovery, et cetera. There's a full data poisoning architecture, uh, both within our uh, chiplets as well as uh, support across uh, the complete system. 
We also had uh, the uh, opportunity when we started developing this microarchitecture, uh, and as side channel attacks were appearing on the horizon, to uh, incorporate ground up uh, a wide variety of hardware level mitigations to side channel attacks. Don't need to depend on software uh, changes, et cetera. Uh, and uh, then along with that, uh, the system level, obviously there's important things in terms of IOMU, advanced interrupter architecture, et cetera, that also need to be there. On the right-hand side of the slide, you can see what the, we, our first generation looks like, physically speaking, uh, where it shows 16 cores, eight along the top, eight along the bottom. There's also 16 L3 slices, uh, your bandwidth scales along with your core count, and then an interconnect, and it obviously tiles very nicely. There's a lot of uh, uh, active power management capabilities, both in hardware and in firmware. And let's go on. Okay. Oh. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> moving in the opposite direction. No. Now, going up to uh, the package level, where you have a multi-chiplet-based system. Uh, we officially support a, a hub-and-spoke type of architecture, where it's a hub with a lot of die-to-die -die links to connect a variety of different chiplets to that hub. It could be one to many uh, Ventana uh, chiplets, depending on the kind of core count you want to scale up to. Uh, uh, a customer may have his own one or, or a few different uh, custom accelerated chiplets, for example. He may have other specialized I.O. or memory chiplets as well. Uh, so a very flexible uh, microarchitecture. What's key to enabling that is uh, a, a, a full die-to-die -die solution, which we have developed, uh, both in terms of our controller, which uh, on the one side supports uh, 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 typical standards you have within uh, SOCs, both CHI and AXI. Uh, it also then can go on top of uh, today, on top of the BOW, uh, a bunch of wires, uh, ODSA standard, and tomorrow it'll be on top of UCIE as well. And the key thing with that data solution that we've architected is foremost very low latency along with low power and high bandwidth. But that's a key thing uh, to support this idea of disaggregating the chiplets while trying to minimize you know, um, the impact of those die-to-die -die crossings so that you really have the appearances from a performance perspective, from a NUMA perspective, as if it was a monolithic die. I think back to you. So there you go. World-class core, very high performance, non-blocking CPU fabric, die-to-die -die interconnect that's ultra low latency, we're talking about seven nanoseconds type latencies where the existing solutions offer something in the 110 nanosecond type latency. So really, disruptions at the core level by bringing in open capability. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back to the slide just a bit. So bringing you back all the opportunities, bringing our hyperscalers, the opportunities to innovate, differentiate using a five nanometer, multi-core, multi-chiplet SOC, we can take it up to 128 or even 190. So basically you can scale it infinitely on the compute spectrum, not infinitely, you can, you can scale it all the way up to the full socket power consumption level, more energy efficiently than any other implementation. What does it get you? Look at that single socket performance. That single socket performance, the orange bar, that tells the story. RISC-V is second to none in the data center space. RISC-V is second to none in the automotive space. RISC-V is second to none in the 5G open, RAN, and 5G infrastructure space, as well as edge computer space. Plus, if you're looking at any other software-defined networking, storage, and other applications, RISC-V is able to tackle it right now. So you know, the Veron product line is the first of its kind in the industry to launch RISC-V into these high performance sockets. Moving forward, we talked about the chiplet based architectures benefits. So if you look at the state of the art today, everybody does a monolithic die. You have a couple of things change. You know, it's really a huge problem for product definition. Product managers really struggle with this. You don't know what memory to incorporate in your product specification, what kind of storage or networking. So as you go through all of that, what you get stuck with is a product, defin you know, a product definition hell. But if you can disaggregate them in a way that allows you to have compute in the most advanced process geometry, namely five or three nanometer, and then have the I.O. hub, the, the portion that has all of the mixed signal rich content in a separate chiplet, 
which can be, by the way, in a 12 nanometer or a 60 nanometer process geometry, you're able to customize that portion based on your workload specific needs. So you kind of combine best of both worlds. So that's why chiplet based architecture is unique. So if you go to the far right portion of the chart we're showing, you'll see that you can have multiple compute chiplets from Mentana. Hyperscalers all have their own accelerators. They all do their D TPUs and the AI accelerator. So you can have that also coexist cash coherently. That's the huge advantage here. So chiplets are key as Gordon Moore predicted in 1965, to reinstate that overall performance curve and capture the performance lot loss we've been suffering for the past decade, and this architecture allows you to do it. With that, okay, chips, great, platforms are great, but what about software? Everybody gets into it. Our goal at Ventana was to be able to get the entire software suite needed to support the full data center class implementation, as well as other high-performance implementations fully in place, ready for commercial process, commercialization process from day one, day one being when we launched the product. So we have been working with several hyperscalers. We've been working with several OEMs since 2018 to ensure that all these building blocks that you see on the screen are fully ported available. So anybody talks about, oh, ecosystem takes a while to come together, please send them our way. We'd like to educate them on why these things are all fully baked and ready to go, allowing you to productize quite readily. So software ecosystem is not going to be an impediment to productize Ventana, Veron, we want in all these markets. What are those markets? We talked about them. Data center, automotive, 5G edge, client. Client is get, you know, it's gaining a lot of momentum. We've been getting a lot of support. I mean, we've been getting a lot of pull demand from a lot of the customers from here, Asia, Europe, India, trying to bring RIS-5 into the client space. Why? There again, you need high-performance cores with all these capabilities. And when you go to automotive, automotives are behaving more like servers on wheels going forward. And as we work with a lot of the leading automotive players, it became apparent to us they actually need all of the high-end features that the data center guys care about. Whatever a hyperscaler cares about, an automotive guy also wants. Plus, you need to have other functional safety features overlaid on top of that. Once you do that, that becomes your automotive class processor. RISC-V is ready to tackle that head-on, thanks to Veron. So with that, I wanted to say thank you for coming. Ventana Veron V1 launches RISC-V into that high performance space. And we have a pretty strong roadmap beyond what we are showing today. And we'd love to continue this revolution that we all as a community started called RISC-V and be able to take it to all these applications. And you know, it's going to take multiple partners who are building similar kind of performance points to be able to proliferate and make it successful everybody else. So we welcome more and more Players. The beauty of this is when we work with a large uh, community of partners who are having similar thoughts, like UCIE, when Greg thought about. So we are going beyond what Ventana can do to bring in everything else that we can um, bring into the overall ecosystem and drive this thing forward. So our goal is to take our product leadership and take it into the market, turn that into design and momentum, and gain significant market share. So that's the Ventana story, and that's why it's a momentous day today. So thank you all for coming. Mm -hmm. Please stop by at our booth, and if you have any questions, we'd love to chat with you. Greg mm -hmm. and all of our senior executives are going to be at the booth. We are a diamond sponsor, and by the way, um, as part of uh, us being a premier member of RISC-V, I also sit on the RISC-V board of directors. I see some of our fellow board members here, so thanks for coming. Look forward to working with you all to make RISC-V happen in the data center space with Veron. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.